Yeah, tell me about how the premiere went. Uh, it was phenomenal. I was really, really thrilled to see how the audience followed everything exactly as we hoped they would. You know, there was gasps with reveals and there was... I say to people, the only mandate is great fucking stories. That's it. We're not here trying to cure cancer, change the world, promote any specific agenda. We are in this business to tell great stories, find great stories, work with great people to tell great stories. And that's really about the sum total of it. Um, and to date, we've had a great time doing it. It's been really uh, exciting, challenging. We've worked with absolutely incredible filmmakers, Morgan Neville, Matt Tiernauer, uh, Daniel Minahan now, uh, incredible producers, Molly Asher, uh, for, you know, for example, Peter Spears, just really, really remarkable, exciting, dynamic people who are similar to us. You know, they like to work hard, get the work done well, and have a good time doing it. That's so awesome. Yeah. So I, you're talking about how you know what you like when you when you see it and you and you are specifically here to tell great fucking stories. Yeah. Um, but what is it that you're looking for mm -hmm. when you when you are pursuing a project or when you're trying to develop? Something? Yeah, that's a good question. the The big motivator for us, whether it's a documentary on sports fans, you know, we have a beautiful film about the Philadelphia Eagles fans, the year they won their first ever Super Bowl. Oh, fun. Um, and that's that feels light years away from on Swift Horses, you know, a 1950s uh, romantic drama um, set in, in the middle of the country. And it's, um, the thing that, that's the same about those things is that they're deeply human stories. You know, Jen and I, whether it's Scotty and the Secret History of Hollywood or Roy Cohn or the doc on Fred Rogers, we resonate with characters who are deeply connected to what it means to be human, empathetic, loving, complicated, difficult, you know, all of those adjectives that make up what it means to be human. And, it, and it's part of what drew us to On Swift Horses. You know, it's a complex story. It's a nuanced story. It's, a, it's somewhat thorny. There's some difficult, you know, sections of it. There's a, a you know, Will Poulter's character is kind of left high and dry, <laughs> devastated. And it's always heartbreaking to me, you know, because it's, it's such a, he's such a, a wonderful person. And, and you know, to see him, see what happens to him is sort of, uh, you know, challenging. But but it's very much a part of what it means to be human, right? Heartbreak is part of the human story. And so we, we look for, whether it's documentaries or narratives, we look for stories that are really about the, the, the uh, process of being a human being, the experience of being a human being. Right. And talk about your own personal career with Wavelength. You've been yeah. there for a little bit now, and I think you've worked your way up. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, talk about that. Well, I started producing with Jen. When, when Jen and I first threw in together, I was producing a documentary um, about her family. Uh, it was called Let Me Be Me. It was uh, d uh, acquired and distributed by Greenwich. Uh, it took about seven years to make that film. Really, really beautiful. But, again, 
nuanced, very human story about Jen's own family. Mm -hmm. And in the process of, of producing yeah. that and putting that together, yeah. Yeah. we took on a number of other films and started to produce those as well. Um, and Jen is a very accomplished producer in her own right. Uh, and what we found was that while we were investing in a number of projects, what the film teams really needed was that kind of producerial support. They needed to, uh, to have the, the support around them that could help them think about distribution and think about festival strategy and, and quite frankly, figure out how to get the film actually made so that it could get into Sundance or South by or whatever you know, targeted festival they wanted to go to. And so we, we started to dig in on a lot of projects in that way. And it was clear to us that that was something that we were good at and that we could really help these film teams with. Um, and we have a great track record of, of doing that and we enjoy doing it and we're still doing it now. Um, but we've gotten a lot bigger. We have a larger team now and we're starting to do more narrative stuff and we're starting to do more sort of doc series uh, stuff, TV type stuff. Um, so, so we're expanding at the same time. Oh my God. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, it makes me wonder about the people that you work with. I'm not sure if you call them clients or partners or filmmakers or whoever, but yeah. like, who is your ideal partner? Uh, who do you like to work with? What type of person? Yeah, you know, well, again, we're really direct. Mm -hmm. You know, we're really clear. Um, so we like people like that, you know. Um, it doesn't mean we have to be right. It doesn't mean we think we're always right. But we do know how we sort of feel about it and we want and expect the same. Uh, the partners that we love working with are people who are similar in that way. Also, you know, respectful. It's a, it's a tough business. Every one of these projects is like, it, it's like a family business, you know, and, you, and you're constantly starting a whole new family and a whole new business with every single project. And no two projects are the same as much as we would love for them to be. Uh, there are nuances and personalities and there are characters and it's, you know, it's a, a, like any family. Um, so good partners for us, you know, Leyline, for example, on, on Switch Horses, just really um, open lines of communication, really clear. Um, we all know it's going to be difficult at times, it's going to be fun at times, we're all pulling in the same direction, um, all very respectful of one another. You know, it's it seems like simple things, but it, it makes a big difference, especially as you get into the trenches, which you always do on every project. Absolutely, you know? yeah. Well, let's talk about On Swift Horses. Um, for people who are maybe just discovering the film, can you just give a quick synopsis on what the movie's about? Yeah, well, there's uh, there's no quick synopsis. It's <laughs> a complex true. story. But, but I will say, <laughs> you know, it's it's a family story. You know, yeah. it's two brothers uh, played yeah. by Will Poulter and uh, Jacob Elordi. And then there's Muriel played by Daisy Edgar Jones, who's married to one of the brothers and sort of falls in love with the other brother. Um, and, and the process of sort of uncovering that and the journey that she goes on, you know, discovering herself, um, the journey that Jacob's character goes on discovering himself and where the, that journey takes them is really the unfolding of, of the film. Uh, but it's a very beautiful, sexy, nuanced um, love story set in the 1950s um, and, you know, has all of the wonderful set pieces that go with 1950s cars and, and costume and um, it, it's a it's a very it, it's kind of like a step back into a, a romantic vision of America that I haven't seen in a, in a while so it's very uh, it's a, a beautiful film yeah beautiful film and stellar cast I yeah. mean just yeah. an incredible ensemble here yeah, amazing um, ensemble. Uh, uh, Diego Calva, uh, Calva is also part of it. Yep. You know, he, yep. has, he has a, a pretty significant role. Um, and so, uh, I guess when it comes to being a producer, um, I think what I've learned is that there's a lot of different ways to be a producer. Yeah. So I guess I want to know more about how specifically you guys worked and totally. what your relationship was with um, with the development and production of Onto Courses. Yeah. So we came in as financiers alongside Leyline and First Gen. Our goal as a company is to start to ladder up on the narrative side. So we brought in a scripted exec, uh, Caitlin Cleary, who came to us from Imagine, and she's really helping us to build out that slate. And what we found on the doc side when we first started with docs was find the people who are the best at doing it and work with those people. So we started working with Morgan Neville. We started working with Matt Ternauer, you know, these, these really um, fantastic and talented uh, and kind filmmakers. 
And so we did the same thing here. We went out and we had met with uh, Teresa Page and the team from Leyline, and we we're like, these these are the best in the business. We we really really respect and admire them, their work ethic, their taste, their um, you know their their sense of story and how to work with others. And so we threw in with them on this at first gen as well. Uh, again, Michael Dalto and his team, phenomenal team of people. And um, our role was very much sort of to uh, you know allow them to do what they do and to be additive and helpful when we could, whether that was you know reading the script and giving notes on the script or looking at cuts and giving notes on the cuts, things like that. Um, but really for us, it was an opportunity to kind of watch how they put it all together and really learn. And Jen and I always say, like, never be in a position where you're not learning something new. I love that. I love it. Um, being, it's so interesting because uh, on Switch Forces, a major component of the plot is uh, betting. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that, that's uh, right. Number of, uh, that a couple of the characters um, uh, kind of either dabble in or, or struggle yeah. with. Um, and so there's a line in the film. It says, a real gambler's solemn obligation is to be well informed. That's right. I'm really interested in what your take is on that line in relationship to filmmaking. Well, I mean, it's, uh, you know, there's an aspect of all filmmaking that is gambling. Right. Right. Um, we want to go through all of the metrics, we want to go through all the spreadsheets, we want to look at the demographics, we want to understand exactly how much of this we can control. But at the end of the day, we can control very, very little of it. So being, being well informed is the one thing you can control, right? And for Jen and I, we're, we're big on pre-production, we're big on pre-pre-pre-production, you know. Uh, for us, it's like, we, we have to read the script and if it doesn't make me come out of my seat, it's not something we're gonna do with. Um, same thing for Jen, you know, you have, you have to start with that sort of gut reaction. This is a, this is a great fucking story. Well, we wanna tell this story. Um, and then from there, really understanding in, in as much as you possibly can the world of the story and the cast of this, how are we gonna cast it? How are we gonna put it together? And what does distribution look like? And you know, all of these films take years to put together. So the landscape is shifting constantly. By the time the movie is released, the landscape is completely different than when you started it, right? Um, but it, staying informed um, and, and doing everything you can to educate yourself and understand as much as you possibly can is about the only thing you can control for. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I just thought that, that was an interesting idea in the film, and, uh, and I think filmmaking very much parallels that in, uh, yeah. in a lot of ways. Uh, so what do we... What do we um, what do you think is the significance of this film, or maybe what does it mean to you for this film mm. to be premiering here at yeah. the Toronto International Film Festival? I love this film festival. I, I find this film festival to be one of the greatest litmus tests of whether a film works or not. The audiences are very honest here, they're very authentic. Um, I think that it's, um, it's, it's a real privilege to be able to, to premiere this here. Uh, and, and we were all thrilled. I mean, when we found out we were coming to Tim, we were like, oh, great, that's absolutely perfect for this. Um, yeah, it, it, it's been a thrill. That's awesome. Really happy to hear that. What's, um, do we have any word on what the future is for this film? Where, where we might you know, there's, there's all sorts of conversations happening. I hope that those conversations continue. Uh, my, my hope is that it is seen on the biggest screen possible. I will say, like, I, I always love the premiere when you finally see the color corrected version of the film and they just, it was so beautifully shot and yeah. every element of it is just so lush and gorgeous and I just really hope that it has the opportunity um, to be out in the world in that way because it's it's a stunningly beautiful film. It is, it absolutely is. Yeah. And what about Wavelength? What, uh, what projects do you, do you guys have in the works that, that we can look forward to? Yeah, we have some really, really cool stuff. We have a, a really fun uh, documentary that we're doing in the K-pop space that uh, mm -hmm. there may be some news about uh, soon. And we've got some, uh, well, we've got a bunch of narrative projects in development, awesome. uh, which we're, we're very excited about as well. So just really focusing on all of that stuff and pushing those all downfield now that we've gotten this one out the door. That's incredible. Yeah. Well, Joe, I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with me about totally. Wavelength and the film on Swift Forces and really wishing you and, and uh, Wavelength and the film the best of luck going forward. Awesome. Thanks so much.